Well, good afternoon, everybody. We are in Lewis, well, just outside of the town of Lewis, Iowa, in Cass County. And we've come down here, my friend Kevin and I, Kevin behind the camera. Say hi, Kevin. Hi. Uh, we've got a couple of very interesting stories to share with you. Um, first off, one of the houses here in the, the town of Lewis, just outside of the town of Lewis, was actually one of the houses that was on the Underground Railroad. And we went and visited that, took lots of pictures, and we'll be sharing that and an explanation of that. Also in this area, Lewis was on the uh, part of the Mormon Trail, so there's a lot of history here um, about the Mormons and when they came through, and we'll be sharing some of that. Um, I may be breaking this video into two or three different parts, because while we were here, we also got to uh, listen to an author talk about his book and talk about uh, some of the Iowans who ended up joining the Confederacy during the Civil War. And he gave a very, uh, very interesting talk. So I'm standing here in front of the, uh, the tombstone here of Oliver Mills. And Oliver Mills was one of the conductors on the Underground Railroad. Now, a conductor was somebody that actually helped them move from place to place and helped them get along. Um, we do know that there's uh, one other of the conductors that was buried here. Um, and I think we've found, got that located. Is that correct, Kevin? Yes, sir. So uh, we're going to pause here and head on over to that other tombstone. Okay, folks, we're here at the grave site of Samuel H. Kemp. F was associated with the Underground Railroad also, although his role uh, has not really been documented, we do, but we do know he was associated. Um, he was born, it looks like, 1821 and died in 1904, and he had a wife, uh, Maria. So here's just another one of the, the persons associated with the Underground Railroad and the dangerous work that they did. And we are in Oakwood Cemetery, just outside of Lewis, Iowa. A surreal feeling enveloped us as we drove through the gentle rolling hills of southern Iowa with this lush, green grass and corn. Kevin and I contemplated, and then discussed what we were about to see and tour. At times we rode in silence, unable to comprehend the events that took place on the Underground Railroad. The tears, the fears, the pain, but ultimately, freedom. Before we tell the story of Reverend Hitchcock and look at his house, we need to set the stage. The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 allowed slave owners to retrieve fugitive slaves from free states and return them to bondage in the South. Persons who were caught assisting the fugitives could face fines and imprisonment if convicted. Also under this act, federal marshals could be used to apprehend and return the fugitive slaves. Unfortunately, there were some unscrupulous slave traders that would kidnap previously freed slaves, or free men as they were known, and take them to a southern state and sell them into bondage. So as you can see, the fugitive slaves had to make it somewhere outside of the United States, with Canada being one of the prime destinations. The Underground Railroad. It was not a railroad or underground but rather it was a system created in which runaways were provided assistance during their flight to freedom. The system used railroad terminology. A guide was known as the conductor, a station or depot was a hiding place, and so on. Many runaway slaves from Missouri would cross over into Kansas and then move north to the Iowa and Nebraska border. Although there were different destinations from that point, many traveled east across Iowa then north up to Chicago, and eventually made their way to Canada. Well, here we are. Um, we're just down the road or up the road, however you want to say it, from the uh, site of the Reverend George B. Hitchcock House. This is on the National Historic Landmark. Uh, it's in Cass County, Iowa. And as I said, about a half mile up the road here was the Reverend's house. And this house was on the Part of the Underground Railroad. Now, the Reverend did want this really long lane that way because he knew he was holding uh, runaway slaves in his house. He would have plenty of time, he'd be able to hear the noise of the horses or the wagons or anyone coming up to the house, and it would give him time to get the slaves hidden and, and, uh, and uh, to get his house in order because he did have a lot of bounty hunters. Uh, 
Reverend Hitchcock was a congregational minister who moved to the Lewis, Iowa area in order to establish a church. He purchased 120 acres of land near the Nishnabotna River and built a federal-style house upon it. The house was constructed with two types of stone, sandstone, a softer type of rock, uh, which was used for the above-ground structure. A harder rock, limestone, was used to build the basement. The limestone came from a limestone outcrop just a few miles from the house. Walking through the house takes you back to the 1850s. Wood stoves, pantries, formal dining areas, and rope beds. A lot of effort has been undertaken to restore and refurbish the house, which had fallen into disrepair. Many of the furnishings are correct for the period. While it is fun to see the vintage decor and such, I would like to take us straight to the basement, the focal point of this video. I will include more pictures of the interior of the house at the end. I did notice that a picture of Abraham Lincoln was displayed in the dining room. It is said that having Lincoln's picture in a home was a signal that the residents were anti-slavery and that the home might be a safe haven. So where exactly were these freedom seekers being hidden in this house? Well, as you come in the back door, you enter into a small room. And from that room, there's a doorway here, and that doorway leads to steps down into the basement. There was a second entrance into the basement from the outside. From, uh, the side of the house and it had the storm cellar type doors on it and a wide uh, stairway there and you could access the basement directly from the outside of the house now in the basement was also where they had the kitchen but as you come down the steps and then you turn around and you see this um, big hole in the wall there with the, where there's the two black drapes now those that hole right there is where they uh, would enter into the secret room. It is believed that there was either shelves put in there or they're halfway up. It was like a, a bureau or a dresser type thing with shelves on top of it that somehow would block that entrance. They do not have exact proof of how that uh, entrance was covered. So, because it's on the National Historic uh, Landmark list, they can't recreate anything like that until they get definitive proof. So, they just have these two black curtains hanging there into the entrance. We've moved into the actual secret room, and we're looking through the curtains out into the basement. A couple things struck me as I stepped inside of this room. One is it seemed to be a fairly large size room. It was about 12 by 20. And I had it in my head uh, that, you know, the secret room was going to be this little teeny tiny space where everyone would be super cramped. Well, you know, for secret rooms, this is a well, pretty good uh, size, I would say. Um, probably fairly comfortable for the, you know, under the circumstances. The other thing was, as I stood there and I looked around, I couldn't help but think of all of the stories of those that passed through that room, that had stayed in that room. How many tears had been cried uh, out of desperation? How many maybe tears of joys had been cried because they knew freedom was just around the corner? When you stand in, in places like this, it, it just, uh, well, it affects you. It, uh, it really challenges to think inside of yourself to challenge yourself how would I react in the if I were in a similar situation so as we look around the room and we see the different pictures from around inside the room we can see there's a bed and a chair and a small table and those are not uh, uh, from that room they're just been placed there just to kind of give you an idea of what the room may have looked like We step out of the uh, secret room and out into the basement area again. We see the grand fireplace where all the cooking of the house was done. We see these amazing limestone walls, the heavy oak beams, some of the brooms and utensils, 
they may have used down here. And then we step out into the sunlight. We step out into the beautiful yard and we take just a stroll. As we finish up here, I'd just like to let everybody know that this story isn't finished yet as far as Lewis. Um, right along this property here, well, this was right along the Mormon Trail. So there's a lot of uh, history there about the Mormon Trail and how they used to skirt around uh, Mr. Uh, or Reverend Hitchcock's land, uh, story of the river, uh, ferry boat there. They still have uh, the original house there where the family lived that ran the ferry for the river. So we've got a lot more to tell. I hope you've enjoyed this presentation because uh, we sure had a lot of fun putting this all together. So I do have one more uh, short closing video uh, wrapping up our day here in Lewis. And then I'm going to just tack on to the end some pictures of the interior of the house. Thank you so much, everyone, for watching. On behalf of Kevin and I, thank you. Well, I'll tell you what, it's been a long afternoon and a long day, and we've got a couple hours ride back home, but it's been fun uh, exploring the area around uh, Lewis here, uh, going to the cemetery, seeing the Reverend's house, learning about the Mor Mormon Trail, and then that author's presentation. So, this has just been a great day, and I can't wait to get home and start editing these videos. So, everyone, have a very delightful day.